a kidnapped daughter, a plagued village, and a haunted hero. When Resident Evil 4 was released in 2005, it not only gave its franchise new life, it helped to revolutionize video games. In the nearly two decades since, RE4 has remained one of the high points of the series, loved by new generations of fans even as the medium continues to improve on the gameplay started here. Eventually, Capcom's wave of Resident Evil remakes reached 4, but unlike the fixed camera angle horror of the original RE's 1 through 3, RE4R was already much closer to modern gameplay. So what could the studio do to make a remake worth it? Well, I mean the almost guarantee that this game would practically print money for the studio obviously makes it worth it alone, but you know what I mean. A graphics update would not be enough. But change RE4 too much, and it's no longer the campy action adventure that fans fell in love with in the first place. The solution? RE4R is a haunted modern action thriller that's just as entertaining as it is terrifying. And with controls that are the best in the series, the game's level of immersion is possibly the highest in the franchise. Simply put, 2023's Resident Evil 4 Remake is an example of how to take one of the greatest games of all time and make it even better. But most importantly, it's the franchise's greatest example of empowerment through horror. A through line of every great horror game, every great horror movie, and ultimately the great hidden strength of horror as an entire genre. So let's return to that dark village in Spain and find out why we love what scares us. Resident Evil 4's release in 2005 is a landmark moment, not just in Capcom's survival horror franchise, but in video games overall, helping to cement over-the-shoulder action gameplay and bridging the series from fixed camera terror to on-the-move action. Several years ago, I made a video just about Resident Evil 4, detailing how it revolutionized the franchise through its shift in gameplay mechanics and emphasis on action empowerment over scarcity-propelled horror. For decades, Resident Evil 4 stood as one of my favorite games of all time, and a beloved entry in the series for millions of players. With a video already detailing what makes the original special and available for you to watch, we're going to avoid my previous approach of comparing and contrasting remake and original, and instead stay focused on the 2023 remake. If you're watching this video, then you almost definitely know the story of RE4, so let's go through it quick and spare the details. In the years since the fall of Raccoon City, surviving rookie cop Leon S. Kennedy has become a government agent, and our story begins with Leon arriving in Spain on the trail of Ashley Graham, the kidnapped daughter of the US president. But this is no ordinary cult kidnapping, those things are a dime a dozen, as the Los Illuminados cult is in control of a bioweapon known as Las Plagas, which will consume your body and subject you to the will of their leader, Lord Osmond Sadler. So now Leon must save Ashley, stop a plan to spread Las Plagas around the world, and foil Albert Wesker and the thought dead Ada Wong's attempt to claim this parasite for themselves. Like every RE game, it's a story of deadly secrets, disgusting monsters that play off old fears, and a high-tech conspiracy underneath it all. But one story element that distinguishes both versions of RE4 from almost every other game in the series is that we're not unsuspecting victims trying to survive being caught in a nightmare. We're a deadly agent ready to kick ass, even as the situation spins wildly out of our control. And that's part of what makes Resident Evil 4 such a cathartic and exciting experience. This is payback for years of loss and terror at the hands of Umbrella and the worst of the worst.
Every RE game has this in some form by the end, but RE4 provides this sense of satisfaction from start to finish. That comes baked in with the over-the-shoulder view, and while the original 4 first implemented this, it still had a form of tank controls by forcing you to stand your ground when taking your shot. In the 2023 version, we're fully on the move like RE2R and RE3R, now empowered by placing us in control of Leon Kennedy, maybe the most capable and deadly character in the entire franchise. Seriously, this guy just kickflips his way out of danger all the time. And that's especially the case in RE4R, with slick yet weighty controls that absolutely make you feel at one with this badass machine of an agent. The Resident Evil 4 Remake was announced in 2022 and released on March 24th, 2023. Directed by Yasuhiro Anpo and Kazunori Karuai, produced by Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, designed by Hirohiro Goda, programmed by Masatoshi Fukuzawa, with lead artist Hirofumi Nakaoka, writer Matthew Castello, and music composed by Koto Suzuki. With most having decades of experience working on the franchise and specifically involved in the Resident Evil 2 Remake. Like every RE remake, the new version of 4 is a more serious, human, grounded experience. But it doesn't suck all the fun out of it. In the past, I've poked fun at all the stiff line readings and unintentional camp that filled the early RE games. But they're part of their charm. And 4 is no exception, with Shinji Mikami's game leaning into big, broad action stereotypes and one-liners, as a now highly trained Leon shoots, kicks, and flips his way through a countryside full of evil Spanish stereotypes. RE4R doesn't delete those campier elements in favor of a gritty and dour affair. Really, you'd have to rework the entire game if you wanted this to be something totally serious. It's got a freaking evil castle with a little Lord Fauntleroy type square in the middle of it for God's sake. Instead, what we have is a new version of the game that keeps all those high octane elements, makes them more brutal, and adds a real emotional weight and well-roundedness to our heroes. This is something I've seen happen with the best modern action movies. We still want wild, brutal, well-choreographed action set pieces that are easy to watch and comprehend. We're well past the plague of murky, poorly choreographed action of the 2000s, thankfully. But we also want deeper characters, full of unique flaws, strengths, and motivations. We want our heroes to be a little less Hulk Hogan and a little more CM Punk. 18 years separate RE4 and RE4R, and while there have been countless improvements to gameplay, graphics, and capabilities, the approach to the AAA blockbuster video game has fundamentally changed as well. Yes, players still expect stories, gameplay length, and experiences that match or top the most explosive Hollywood blockbuster, but they also expect a greater level of emotional investment. Naughty Dog's The Last of Us is the hallmark example with just as much of its playtime devoted to dialogue, character beats, and emotional choices as brutal combat against the infected. One informs the other, making these into more cinematic experiences far removed from arcade roots, and instead attempting to deliver an unforgettable story to players. Personally, I think that sometimes sucks the replayability out of games with all sorts of unskippable, slow, dramatic playthrough sections that you can really get sick of after several replays. Still, it creates moments of deep deep emotional investment that align the player with the exact emotions the creators want them to feel at that specific moment. The bigger the game, the more it seems like these moments are inevitable. And RE4R is no exception, complete with one of those slowly walk to objective while carrying person slash MacGuffin as the world reshapes around you and you grapple with your personal demons scenarios. The intention is clear. We are as far away from the days of Pong as possible, and this is some real cinematic shit. One of the defining changes made in RE4R, and something that I think is integral to making this game as cathartic as it is, is that writer Matthew Costello and team choose to emphasize Leon's haunted nature and regrets stemming from Raccoon City. Like I told you, I'm gonna get you home safe. <laughs> Like the original version, RE4R opens with Leon remembering Raccoon City and the years afterward. But instead of a simple catch-up, we see that Leon is filled with regrets, all encapsulated in one repeated line. This time, it can be different. It has to. Voice actor Nick Apostolides' work as Leon manages to flip back and forth between a more haunted side and a cockier action hero as needed helping to sell his evolution from Raccoon City. One of my favorite things about the Resident Evil 2 remake is that its story is laden with so much more pathos, making the loss of Marvin Branagh, the seeming death of Ada Wong, even the sacrifice of Annette Birkin into truly sad moments. And each of them takes its toll on Leon. 
In RE4R, we quickly find out that Leon's main knife is the same one that Marvin gave him years prior in the depths of the RPD. With RE4R's new parry system, we cling to it as our last, best defense, even beneath the sparking, snarling blade of a bloody chainsaw. Late in the game, when we fight twice with Krauser, an absolute highlight of the game and maybe two of my favorite boss battles ever, their specificity and hard-earned victory elevating them to the level of MGS3's medium redefining fights, Leon and player cling to Marvin's blade as both a symbol of strength and a reminder of why we fight. With Krauser essentially the antithesis of Branagh, one a man that couldn't save himself but still inspire goodness, the other an unkillable fiend with years of destruction under his belt. Now a dangerous agent, Leon is a confident, extremely skilled killer, but there's also something eating away at him. Sure, he's still the cocky, flipping, resilient hero, but he's a little more ruthless now. You talk too much. Failed! You vulgar, utterly uncivilized! Oh, grow! So generally, the actual balance between action and horror is quite close to what it was in the original game, said Hirabayashi. However, as a trend with the latest Resident Evil games, the elements of survival horror are important for the RE4 remake as well. So the horror aspect is something that we have place focus on. Users might feel there's slightly more horror than they felt in the original game. But players will also notice that the action in the game has been improved on heavily since the original game. If there's anything that RE4 makes me think of, it's not another video game. It's a movie, Steven Summers' remake of The Mummy from 1999. I was absolutely obsessed with The Mummy as a kid, and I think it was the film's blend of action, comedy, and true horror that made it so exciting to me. This was a movie that would scare you, thrill you, and ultimately make you cheer, and it kept that tension between these three poles of entertainment all the way from beginning to end. That's something that I think is extremely rare for a movie to pull off, since most films that blend action, horror, or comedy eventually settle on one genre over the other, becoming more serious and terrifying, or more outright funny, or more straightforward action-packed. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes this settling is due to a film's inability to maintain its tone, but often it's because the creators have a specific point to make, and that will align most with one genre. 1999's The Mummy, however, still has scares, still has laughs, and still has great action all the way through its third act. And this is where RE4R differs from the original. Outside of the Regenerators, the horror of the original Resident Evil 4 is long gone by the second half of the game. Takeshi's Castle is a wild cartoon thrill ride, and the island is almost entirely a firefight. This structure is still the same in the 2023 version, but the RE team has managed to maintain a sense of horror that previously dissipated. Part of that is because current gen graphics allow for developers to create much more detail and atmosphere, making the island a rain-slicked, decaying piece of industrial horror. The other part is because these versions of our stock enemies are generally more disturbing. Take, for example, the animal-headed brutes new to this version of the game. RE4R emphasizes the cult aspect of Los Illuminados, including a cold open sacrifice scene, multiple bloody altars that can be found, and more rituals that are performed by our enemies. These brutes, with their heads covered by decaying filth, illustrate a madness and devotion that goes beyond Las Plagas. And the effects of these parasites are so much more grotesque as well. In general, every Resident Evil remake is a more gruesome affair than its original version, and that's no exception here. With broken necks and splintered bodies, RE4R shows us that Los Ganados are basically hollowed out puppets of the parasites housed within. The Chainsaw Man, easily one of the scariest elements of the original, now has an appearance that implies that a bag is the only thing keeping its head together. In contrast to the increasingly inhuman enemies are several characters that are pushed out of the cartoony original versions and into much more compelling iterations. Genevieve Buchner as Ashley is no longer the completely annoying whiner and feels more like a real partner, fully aware of the danger of her situation and fighting to stay brave. Andre Peña as Luis is much less of a silly Lothario caricature, becoming an anti-hero looking to make up for his past mistakes. Just look at any moment where Leon has a real connection to Ashley or Luis's death. They mean so much more because the game is working to make these characters into people you really do like, which makes the horror much scarier. You know, I led a pretty shitty life. But 
now, eh? <clears throat> what do you think, Leon? People can change, right? Ada is also here. You walk away now, and who knows? Maybe you'll live to meet me again. <clears throat> like the original, RE4R even retroactively adds a sense of loss and sadness to all those legions of ganados we fought in its end credits, which detail how Sadler and his cult ruined the lives of countless innocent people. Ultimately, what we're focused on here is the idea of becoming empowered through being terrified. But before we get there, let's talk about what it means to be disempowered as a game player or even as a movie viewer. Watching film is a passive act. We watch a story play out and have no real impact on what will actually happen. But a great movie makes you feel like you're right there in the story. So in order to make a viewer feel disempowered, nothing really has to change. The writer and director simply have to make you aware of how little you can actually do. My favorite example of this is one of my favorite films, Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. Hitchcock's classic thriller stars Jimmy Stewart as L.B. Jeffries, a photographer stuck in his sweltering apartment due to a broken leg. But when Jeffries suspects his neighbor across the courtyard of murder, all he can do is snoop through his telephoto lens. Both Jeffries' friends and Hitchcock's direction call attention to our star's voyeurism, a man who is ultimately incapable of doing anything but who's obsessed with spying on the lives of others. Hitchcock specifically puts our point of view squarely in Jeffrey's apartment and never leaves it, aligning our point of view with our protagonist and slowly highlighting his impotence, especially when our suspected killer arrives in our home. We're ultimately made aware of our inability to change anything we see and are forced to reevaluate how we've experienced everything in the movie previously. Video games have to walk a much finer line in their efforts to disempower a player while still making the game work as a playable, engaging piece of entertainment. Under the definition of Marshall McLuhan, films are a hot media meaning that someone can be passive while engaging with it. Video games, like comic books or novels, are a cool media and require active participation from the audience in order to function. By their nature, video games must encourage active participation to propel the narrative, create tension as necessary, and finish the story. So when a player is disempowered, they may be discouraged enough to simply put down the game and never pick it back up. There's also a suspension of disbelief that's necessary in games. It's the difference between thinking, these guys are tough, I gotta fight hard to keep going, versus the devs are being assholes to me right now. One encourages playing harder, the other makes you jaded. Technically, every game lets you win, with developers setting the level of challenge to be just difficult enough to be possible with the right level of experience and right choices. As RE4R Leon, we can shoot, run, duck, sneak, kick, and parry. And when combined with a wide variety of weapons that gives us a huge amount of choices in how to tackle any enemy, we feel empowered. When fighting a huge horde of enemies, RE4R becomes much more exciting than the original. When fighting a boss, I think it becomes a little easier. Although I think that every new interpretation of a boss fight here is excellent. Except, unfortunately, the Lago which I think is a major downgrade from the original, because it lacks the tension that made our original encounter so exciting. Resident Evil 4's gameplay loops greatly differ from the approach in every previous RE game. 0, 1, 2, 3 and Code Veronica treat their environments like a puzzle. Every room is a lock, and the player must find a literal or metaphorical key to open it and continue expanding the confines they've been trapped in. That means lots of backtracking and puzzle solving. RE4R has way less of this, treating its locations and locked doors more like hurdles to overcome, often done by wiping out every enemy in the area. The impact is that players are much better armed and the pacing of the game is much more cinematic, blowing away waves of enemies and taking down the cult member by member. Ada's story in the Separate Ways DLC helps to expand that world even more, becoming both a fun alternate view on Leon's journey and also a way to ease the greatest fear of every modern RE fan. Cut content, oh god, cut content. And yes, some elements are missing from this remake. We don't get chased by a giant statue. We don't have the lava dragon room. But sometimes I think video game fans get a little too precious with their attachment to old games. To me, RE4R is superior to the original because it's a more complete experience. And the greatest addition is its emotional core. 
for Leon and the player, saving Ashley, stopping Sadler, and proving that, yes, this time things can be different, is the ultimate catharsis. The original Resident Evil 4 was the game that made me an RE fan, obsessively replaying it on my GameCube and then on many different ports in the years since. But I've loved horror even longer. Ever since I watched the original The Evil Dead at far too young of an age, and its grotesque DIY horrors terrified yet captivated me when mom and dad weren't around to change the channel. In the years since, my love for both has only grown, and I find that my passion for horror both on film and behind the controller stems from almost a form of inoculation against some of the most disturbing and haunting ideas possible. With film, we can consider what it would be like to experience loss and trauma and our natural responses. With games, we're given the chance to fight back and make things right. Another element of RE4R tied directly to Leon's emotional journey is our end credit song, The Bullet or the Blade by Sam Drysdale, which essentially takes us into Leon's memories of regret and loss, only to lead us out into hope for the future. After a long journey through death, corruption, and evil, it's easily the most hopeful ending in the franchise. I'm fascinated to see what Capcom will do with any future remakes, especially in the event of an RE5R, which is heavily hinted at by the end of the Separate Ways expansion. Resident Evil 5 was the moment the franchise pushed headlong into complete bombast and action over horror, and in the process lost some of the connection to its characters. Would an RE5 remake add the soul and pathos that RE4R captured? Will a Code Veronica remake give Claire some long overdue development? Wherever the franchise goes, there will be many more days ahead of conquering our fears and riding off into a better tomorrow. Thanks for watching today's video and happy Resi December Evil 2. This is the final video of this Resident Evil themed month, and I hope that you've had as much fun as I have. It's been an absolute blast going through so many different corners of the franchise once again, and I really wanted to cap off this month of RE videos with talking about Resident Evil 4 Remake, which of course came out earlier this year if you're watching the video now. As I said in the video, I am a huge fan of the original Resident Evil 4, so when a remake was announced, I was a little skeptical. Like I said, I think that, that game is one of the greatest games of all time, so what really can you do to improve on it? Well, Capcom found a way. And I think that RE4R really does replace the original RE4 in my heart. This is such an excellent game. So fun to play, so exciting, an awesome story, even better characters. It is absolutely thrilling from start to finish. And like I said, an absolutely cathartic experience as well. In all these videos, I've talked about how a main theme of these Resident Evil games is traveling through a dark night of the soul and into light. And that once again is here in RE4R. But I think that Capcom really, really focused on that theme here and really made it a much greater part of the story and the gameplay. So by the time you finally blow up Sadler once and for all, it just feels so good. I'm really interested to see where these remakes go next. Because obviously there could be an RE5 remake, there could be a Code Veronica remake, there could even be a new version of Outbreak. I think that would be a lot of fun. So obviously the franchise can go in a lot of different directions, as well as whatever RE9 will be. Where will they stop? Will they do an RE6 remake? That sounds really weird, but maybe they will. I don't know, that's, that's just strange to me, but we'll see. But overall, I think that RE4R will be very, very difficult for Capcom to top. But obviously they're not gonna stop now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Resident Evil 4 remake and how it compares to the original for you, as well as your thoughts on the future of the franchise. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support, and if you'd like to be a patron, it's only a dollar a month for early access to every video and exclusive Patreon-only reviews. This marks the end of Resident December Evil for this year, and I've had such a great time. So let me know your thoughts on this month, and if you want to see Resident December Evil 3, because there's so many other topics that I can still cover. Until then, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the new year.